Samantha Martin. I am a junior at the University of Kentucky where I'm studying environmental science and creative writing. Um, a little bit about me, I really love musicals, I really love acting and filmmaking, um, and I hope to be a casting director one day. Um, I'm also the author of the upcoming young adult science fiction novel, Ladium. Um, Ladium is sort of this uh, cool blend between science fiction, mystery, and contemporary fiction all at once. It's about this girl named Lydia who finds herself in a boarding school called Yucca Prep. She doesn't really know how she got there. All she knows is that supposedly her father has been killed and this is where she's been taken. But this whole thing, it's sketchy enough, but it takes a turn when she sees a photo on the wall of her brother who she thinks has been dead for three years. So it sort of then turns into this crazy mystery where she's trying to figure out when was her brother here? What's going on? Is he still here? Is he gone? Is he dead? Is he alive? Why? What is going on in the first place? And then also it's about her just trying to fit in because when she was growing up she didn't really have anyone young that she could talk to and relate to other than her brother who has been missing for three years. So it's about her sort of trying to make that adjustment back into being a regular teenager if she even can accomplish that anymore. Um, and then just trying to figure out what happened to her brother. So yeah, it's got a lot of mystery, it's got romance, it's got lots of action. Um, hopefully, hopefully everyone likes it. <laughs> what makes me unique as a writer? I think one of the most unique things about me as a writer is that I'm so young. Um, I remember exactly what it's like to be an awkward teenager, so I write awkward teenagers um, pretty well. Um, but I think my voice is very youthful. I think it. Um, I think I write young characters well. I also really like just throwing characters into fantastical situations that we can also relate to. Like my character in Ladium, Lydia wakes up in this weird boarding school. There's a lot of weird like sci-fi stuff going on. She thinks her brother might have been murdered, all of this stuff. But at the core of it, she's still just a girl trying to figure out how to grow up, how to fit in, what she should do, just all of this stuff. Um, I think it's really cool how you can blend science fiction with contemporary fiction in that way. <laughs> is not a standalone work. I am actively working towards a series um, that's hopefully going to be two or three books. Um, I'm pretty excited about where it's going to go next. I also um, have some other books that I'm working on. None of them are connected other than Ladium and its sequels, um, but I would say that all of them have a, the thematic connection of being about high school and growing up and the ways in which we romanticize growing up. Um, and is it ever really as good as we see in the media or even when we reminisce, is it um, as good as we think it was? So I really like that idea and I like playing around with that. And I also love fantasy, science fiction. I just really love crazy situations um, that characters get thrown into. I think that's super fun. Have you ever written yourself into one of your characters? Yeah, I would say a lot of my characters are a lot like me. One of Lydia's quirks is that she's super obsessed with watching movies and sort of comparing her life to what she sees on the screen, and that is something that I have a lot of experience with. So I sort of took that quirk from myself and then gave it to her. Um, I think that's a lot of things that, like, I think that's something that a lot of teenagers can relate to as well. Um, when you see all of this media and all of the especially with social media, you see everyone's life and you're like, that's so amazing, why isn't my life like that? Um, that's definitely one of her quirks like that. I also just, I really like writing characters with brown hair because I have brown hair, so that's, that's also a thing that I do. What advice would you give to your younger writing self? Stop using so many dialogue tags and stop... <laughs> Stop describing every single thing that happens. In some of my younger manuscripts, I have every single time a character raises an eyebrow or blinks, I will mention it. I would tell my younger self, chill, like, let the dialogue speak for itself. You don't need to say every single action. Just, and just be better, honestly. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
the toughest criticism you received and how did you handle it? Um, it was actually probably with one of my other books that I was um, sending out. I keep repeatedly getting told that my characters are bland and that no one can relate to them. And for a while I was really, really stubborn and I was like, oh, they just don't understand what I'm going for. But now I have since realized that I probably need to improve the characterization a little bit. So um, I would say I handle it denial first and then I um, try and fix it. <laughs> What did I edit out of this book? Oh my gosh, when I originally wrote this book I was 13 years old, so let's say that, let's just say a lot of stuff has changed. I think the biggest thing that I've done though is I took out a character named Jason, who I loved. I absolutely loved him more than anything, but with Jason in there, it, oh my, love triangle, love rectangle, love rhombus, whatever you want to call it, too many love interests, so... I had to, um, I had to take out poor Jason, maybe he will, maybe he will resurface in another one of my books one day, but it was, it was hard to get rid of him, but I knew it was for the best of the book. Um, yeah, I think that's the only super major thing that I actually took out of here. Um, mostly I added things to add characterization, different stuff like that. This book has, has been through a lot. <laughs> And my phone I decided to update as I was in the middle of my best take yet. So um, I'm going to pick up at number seven, um, since that got cut off in the last video. Um, if you could live in one fictional world, what would it be and why? Obviously the wizarding world. I want to go to Hogwarts. I want to be in Ravenclaw. I want to learn how to do charms. I just, I love Harry Potter. I've loved Harry Potter since I was very young. Um, I know everything about Harry Potter and... I want to be a wizard. I really do. So that's why I want to live in the wizarding world and go to Hogwarts. Outside of other books, where do you find inspiration? Um, I really like musicals. I like just music in general. When I listen to soundtracks like Pirates of the Caribbean, Harry Potter, just the music itself is so inspiring. Like whenever I watch Pirates of the Caribbean, I immediately want to write a pirate story, not just because of the story of Pirates of the Caribbean itself, but because of the score. It's just, I love how music can just, it can just make you feel so many things. And I definitely, there are songs that I, when I was writing this book, um, I was thinking of. Um, I just really love music. I think it's a great place to find inspiration. Did having my book published change my writing process? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes it did. Um, my old writing process, I would start with a concept, I would have my opening scene and I would have a scene about a third of the way through the book and as I was writing I would work my way to that specific scene that I knew I wanted to include and uh, honestly it always sort of by the time that I got to that scene I had developed my characters, I developed their situations, and then the rest of it just sort of fell into place. Having my book published makes me realize that I can't do that. I really need to think a little bit more. I can't have such a chaotic strategy. Um, I actually need to know where I'm going because if I don't know where I'm going, then how, how will I ever um, get to the end, I guess? Um, so as I'm working on the sequel to this book, um, I have a very detailed outline of what's going to happen so that I don't find myself just rambling off a cliff. Um, yeah. Pick up the closest book to you that's not your own. I did have this book, Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. It is amazing. It's the sequel to his book Scythe, which I think has the best world building of any book I've ever read in my life, other than Ready Player One. But um, yeah, I have this book here that was sitting on my bookshelf over there, um, and I pulled it off. I'm gonna go to page 27. And the first paragraph is, Citra watched the woman try to wrap her mind around it. A month? Choose? Are you lying to me? Is this some kind of test? I don't remember what that's about, actually. I read this book all in one day, because um, it's so good. I highly recommend it. Neil Shusterman is one of my favorite authors. He's like the reason that I wanted to be a science fiction author. Um, but yeah, that is uh, about me. Um, thanks. Thanks.